So the start of another week over at Bunter's Yard and today we're at the studio to put together a, a brand new video for you. Now if you've done any uh, video creation before you know that takes quite a bit of time to shoot and edit and overdub and render and upload and all the other things you have to do. Uh, so we've left today completely clear so we can put together a uh, new video as requested. Um, when we did our unbox uh, of our sort of stash uh, last week or so, so a few people asked for um, some steam and a couple of uh, locos in particular. So we're going to be working on one of those today. And uh, a couple of things we need to do, I think, before we, we do that is we need to get the kettle on, make a coffee, and we need to give Ruby her breakfast. So, uh, Rubes, breakfast. Right, that's enough of all that. Uh, welcome back to Bunter's Yard. Today we are going to be working on this uh, terrier. Um, now, if you watched the last video, which was the um, sort of stash unboxing type thing that we did in the crates, um, it was requested that we did a bit more steam this year. There was quite a few requests, and we'll try and get through them as much as we can. Pop that in a focus. There we go. And... Um, well, uh, we'll try and add a bit more steam this year rather than the, sort of the, the more modern um, stuff we've been dealing with. So this is the uh, the Terrier. This was a bargain, I think, from uh, eBay. And I quite like the Terriers, to be fair. Uh, I'm not going to make uh, no excuses on this. I'm going to do just what I want. It's going to get kind of crusty. If you've seen the, uh, the thumbnail, you'll know anyway what to expect. Uh, definitely what to expect from Bunter's Yard. Um, let me take that off first. I think we're not going to have that on the finished model, um, but I'll leave it in the box. So if the next owner would like to keep it, then uh, then that's great. It's there. So these just unscrew. We'll do the front and the back. It just makes it easier to paint if they're not on. So if they're easy to come off, then uh, I suggest taking them off. Pop them out of the way and keep it nice and safe. And uh, that bit fell off the top. So I'll, uh, I'll refix that in a minute. There we go. I'm glued on and we'll give it a little dust. I think it's been sitting on a layout somewhere. So just gonna give it a little clean, uh, just with the soft brush, just to get rid of some of the, uh, some of the fallout that's come from someone's loft, uh, wherever it's been sitting. Right, I noticed that bit was broken, so just gonna pull that out and we'll, uh, we'll refit that. It's already been fitted once before. It looks, looks like a bit of a repair. So just gonna quickly clean that up and then pop it back into place with some uh, little touch of super glue. That's better. So our first job is um, is a, a few uh, water streaks. So I don't really like using uh, white, although I've used it in the last couple of videos if you've seen. So in this one, we're going to use uh, this oil brusher color, which is um, which is just called Buff, I think. I'll put the link down below to these uh, the oil brushes. Now oil brushes, it's an oil paint. It's already pre-thinned. Um, but in the tube it comes in, the brush is much too big for what we're going to use. So I just put a little um, piece in the uh, in the palette there, and then we can apply it with our uh, triple O brush. And so we can get it exactly where we want to get it. Now we're just going to put a couple of little dots, little streaks at the top there. We're not going to try and create the line or the streak with it. And then if we get uh, Got some thinners in there so this is odorless thinner especially for um, oil paints rather than just normal sort of enamel thinners put on a brush there dry the brush off you really don't want it that wet for this particular thing and then just drag it down and you can see just really really lightly just drag it down and try and keep it uh, sort of in vertical um, motion because that's the way water would normally run down the side of anything 
and you can just tidy it up a little bit if you want with your brush take a bit off the end that streak's a bit longer than I want if it gets a bit flary if it's all widens out the bottom you want it more pointy you can uh, you can tidy it up let's just dump that brush it's uh, not the nicest brush we'll use another one of those another triple O and we can just really smile it up the ironic thing is is with what we're going to do most of this is going to not be seen anyway but um, I know it's there so we're going to pop it in and it's always good practice anyway so just around the tops of uh, of where we think the uh, the water's sort of coming from we'll just do a, a patch up there now if you use um, the thinners and you keep it a little bit wetter than you know just dab it on it will um, create a sort of um, a patch an area and it will just spread itself out and um, make it look like a, a little soft area of that particular color that you pop now this works really well with rust colors if you're using rust uh, color oils um, it's quite a nice thing to do just just touch it in with a, a fairly wet brush uh, with the thinners and just let it spread out and it makes a nice little patch it's quite um, quite a useful effect just bear in mind you need to live this uh, a little while to uh, to dry um, although I found in fairness if you cover it with um, like a varnish fairly soon it, it's it's normally okay so back on the other side, let's do that. I've already uh, applied the streaks and just tidying them up. So I've got my little uh, triple O brush here. And with a very um, a very little amount of thinners on there, you can kind of uh, streamline the edges, just fix those, just tidy them up until you're happy. That's the good thing with oils is if you've got too much on there, it's really, really simple just to take off the bit that you don't want again uh, a lot of this is not going to be seen anyway ironically but anyway it's a uh, all good practice and it's I thought it'd be useful to show you anyway again we'll just do the same around the top around that filler cap So our next stage, we're just going to give it a general grime now, that colour um, Vallejo smoke. Now I've mixed this down thinner probably than I would normally. I just want to give it a general sort of misting over with um, with this uh, smoke colour. Now smoke is a translucent paint so you can see through it. It's not it's like a solid colour but it, um, and you can mix it down as far as you need and it just creates this kind of grimy colour. And we can do a couple of streaks down the side so they're uh, they're fairly subtle on this particular bit but uh, if you look around like the white um, pin lining the pin stripes you'll see the um, you'll see where it's going on it's easy to see it that way so it's going to take a few passes try not to do it in one go because it will just come out uh, sort of splodging starts to run so the really really light um, strokes are quite a uh, sort of low pressure on your airbrush as well Again, we're going to do a bit on the top. This is probably going to be much um, mostly hidden with uh, with that next stage anyway. But we'll um, we'll do it anyway, just in case. And then a bit more around the other side. Same again, just a general sort of misting over. And then we'll do a couple of targeted streaks just down the side of the body. Um, they're in no particular place on this one. They're not following any sort of, um, you know, line where it would run from or anything like that. Anyway, front and the back, and then we're on to our next part. So next uh, stage in our airbrush is just plain black. Uh, again, this is the Vallejo, Vallejo model color, so we've mixed this down a bit thinner than usual. Didn't want it to cover 
um, any of the livery up. We just want these black patches. We'll, uh, we'll add some uh, weathering powders in later on in black, um, which will kind of soften it up just a little bit. So the look we're going for on this particular terrier is one that's been used in a uh, like an industrial setting for quite some time, um, not been looked after at all. Obviously, wouldn't get cleaned, and um, there'll be lots of fallout of soot and rust, especially on the top surfaces. So all the the horizontal surfaces, so the roof and the running boards, that sort of thing, they're going to be. Um, quite heavily as I say um, soot and rust covered so we're just going to put a touch of this uh, Vallejo black just around where the coal uh, is on the back so where the dust has gone around the sides and where it's run down the back that sort of thing And then just a few additional streaks here and there, just to add to the general griminess. And then we just need on the, uh, the roof just to uh, just for a bit of fading on the roof and and out in the airbrush we've added some um, of the darkest grey that I had which was black grey um, and just to create that sort of patchy appearance. Okay, now down to our uh, our powder. This is the palette we're using. So the first one we've got is uh, this is a humbro. This is called Smoke. And then we've got the Humbrol Black in there. And then these are the Vallejo colors. So this one is um, Burnt Umber. And they've also got, I can't remember what they're called, um, Burnt Sienna. Um, and a Yellow Ochre and then Dark Earth in there. And then the green one is um, chrome oxide we probably don't use that on this particular one but it's there anyway so we're going to give this a um we're going to do this a wipe brush with the uh, with the weathering powders there's no uh, no other paint colors we're using on this one so we've given to give it a coating of um ak interactive um ultra ultra matte varnish uh it dries really really flat which is lovely so we're just going to make it a bit wet with that just a, a light coat and then we'll uh, dab in the, the weathering powders as we go. So we'll start with black. Just give it a general sort of uh, dirtiness. And then we can start mixing in some other colours. Now because it's wet, um, you kind of get more of an idea of the uh, the final look. Because with weathering powders, as soon as you um, put the varnish on them or any sort of fixative, you will... Um, sort of start to lose some of the vibrancy of it it will sort of mute itself down a little bit so we're going to do it in a few stages so we'll do sort of one layer and then we'll put some more varnish on and then we'll uh we'll go at it again so we're not using any um any sort of scheme at all that's just uh you know a bit of black a bit of brown and kind of trying to keep it a fairly random so that's had a second coat of a uh, varnish, touching in the black and the uh, the darker rust, and then different lighter shades. Again, just trying to keep it sort of fairly random. So we start with black. It's, it's probably nicer to start with uh, the dark colours and then work to the lighter shades. So we're starting with black. A 
I'll put the links to these down in the uh, description as well as uh, the, uh, the colors flashing up on the screen there so you can see what they are but uh, all the links are down below if you uh, if you want to go and investigate these as well now, this yellow is a quite uh, quite an interesting one um, adds a nice uh, really nice sort of rust highlight just use a tiny amount we're using the smallest brush that I can for um, for powders it just means we can target it properly but uh, use the lighter colors kind of sparingly difficult to get off so uh, a little little and often I think is the uh, is the, the call for the day so I've moved the uh, you might notice when the, when I use the uh, the airbrush I move the um, the palette with the powders out of the way because uh, I have done it before I've actually just sort of missed and blown the powders all over the place that creates a real mess so yeah just be careful with your airbrush if you've got um, open powders and I take these uh, these powders are obviously normally in a uh, a small bottle when they uh, when they come it's just easier if they're in a palette and you can sort of mix and match them if you want a different shade uh, sometimes the dark earth I'll add some of the chromium in uh, like the green one or the black just to give me a different sort of variation but I find it's quite nice to mix them on the model as well because it gives that um, yeah sort of modulation that kind of variance and randomness bit more uh, just on those tops of where those where the tops of the water tanks and then we'll extend the uh, the black and the rust down the side underneath the uh, chimney there Now a lot of what we do when we uh, we do our weathering at Bunter Shot, especially for the YouTube videos, it may be slightly over the top, uh, and it's kind of done for a purpose. That, so I do this with other things, where I kind of uh, um, teach certain uh, skills in different things. Is I will sort of go a little bit over the top. It gives you an idea um, of the sort of maximum effect you can choose, uh, that you can achieve, or you could just sort of wind it back a little bit, and. Uh, and, and use it to suit the particular model or the environment you're modeling in. So um, I, I tend to, to uh, sort of model kind of to the extreme, I guess. I understand that it won't suit everybody. Some people like this style. Uh, I understand that some people don't. It's, uh, it's everybody's choice, I guess. So adding some uh, of the black uh, humbrol powder into the uh, into the coal box and we'll run that down the sides as well the roof you can see um, while I was nattering away has had uh, some various colors on there so the humbrol smoke which is a, a new one we use it's kind of like a gray color it's quite um, useful and then we've mixed in a, a couple of shades of rust and a touch of black A little bit of black there just to soften that up. And then I just want to make sure I catch all of the, uh, the flat surfaces where it would uh, get all the fallout and all the um the dust and the soot in the air so it would settle on those uh, sort of running boards and the tops of everything so again i'm just being sort of fairly random a bit of black a little bit of rust maybe a light shade of rust a bit of weathering powder from the uh, from the center Now 
this is going to get a final coat of varnish and it will mute it down uh, a little bit further anyway so it won't be quite as, uh, as extreme as it might look at the moment. move around to the to the front get some grime on there so if you've not used weathering powders before just uh, bear in mind that not all powders are created equally so um, for instance the black um, if you use it in this sort of style um, or especially on a dry model, uh, the Vallejo black doesn't, um, in my experience, seem to work as well um, as the Humbra one. Now the Humbra will stick to anything, uh, wet or dry, and it's um, I just find it more useful than the Vallejo one. But uh, there are other ways of uh, of applying your pigments. They don't have to be dry brushed on, such as this. So I was doing the buffer beam and I forgot that I uh, didn't attend to those buffers. You can see the mold line going through, which is really uh, unattractive. So uh, we'll, we'll attend to that in a second. Just using the brush just to take some of that off. I think I put too much on, I didn't like that. Now if you're uh, applying your uh, your pigments in this way, your brush will uh, eventually get wet because you're using uh, wet varnish on there. So uh, just, just uh, change it from time to time. Try using one that's dry. It works a little bit better as it gets all blocked up and clogged. It's, uh, it's not particularly useful. So we're just going to flat these back using a, um, a small diamond file just to make them, uh, just get rid of that mold line. Uh, do the front and the back and uh, just dust that off out of the way. I should have done this first before I started, but I uh, completely forgot all about it. And we're going to give it a final misting with our, uh, our varnish. So we've kept the, uh, the varnish is the only colour we've um, had in the brush for a little while now. So uh, we're just going to give everything a light coat of that. Not too much, otherwise, uh, you know, you will get rid of a lot of your uh, your pigment effect, your we uh, weathering powders effect. So we'll let that to uh, leave that to dry for a for a moment, and then we'll come back, and then we'll carry on with the next part, which is going to be all the wheels and the uh, the chassis. Now the problem with uh, obviously using an airbrush and the powders. Uh, on the wheels they're going to get a bit dirty so just be mindful um, it's going to be difficult to avoid um, you will get things uh, sort of settling on the contact points you're going to need to clean them off so we're just going to do this with a brush as carefully as we can but um, knowing that I'm going to have to clean it anyway so random um, sort of colours mainly we will concentrate on, on, on the rust tones to the dark one and that mid rust there. And then occasionally a little bit of black. Again, just trying to keep it a little bit random. Now around the um, the sort of screws and any bits that um, is going to move try and just avoid them as much as you can because uh, you, if you get paint or varnish or powders in them it, it will uh, sort of impair the running of your of your model so just a little bit of varnish and then we'll go uh, for another pass again and just need to do that until you're happy until you've um, yeah, got it to where you want it to be. Then we 
need to just move the wheels out of the way. Just move the uh, move them around, rotate them a little bit, and then you can uh, get the rest of the uh, the wheel that's been obs obscured by the uh, by all the other pieces of metal work in the way. So we're going to paint those in just a gunmetal, just for now. Just go, just give them a, a sort of colour. And then one of our uh, final parts is the uh, is the AK Interactive uh, shaft and bearing grease, which is a, an enamel paint. So uh, uh, this is the last one of the last things that we're going to do because it will dry to a sort of glossy, wet look. And again, just uh, try and avoid some of the. bits where it you know the bearings and stuff where it may uh, sort of interfere with the running of your of your uh, your loco and we're just going to put this in places where there may be an oil spill or even just a wet patch and we'll um we're just going to change a few of these bits in a minute we're just going to pop this on for now though There's different um, the different shades of this. This is the, this is the, the black uh, sort of shaft and bearing, but there's different oil spills and petrols and all sorts. So it's got a useful uh, useful range, and as I say, it dries to this kind of glossy wet look. So it's uh, it's quite nice um, to use, but you need to use it you use it after um, any of your matte varnishes. So a little bit on the buffer ends there. That just uh, Gives it a greasy look, and then just around the coupling hook. Now, if you use um, a little bit of thinners on a brush, this is just enamel thinners, and then just touch it in. It will uh, will just help it to spread and um, give it less of a sort of solid appearance. And just looks like different sort of wet marks and water marks that sort of thing and finally let's give it a bit of a clean so um, you can use any solvent I guess on this so I intend to use airbrush cleaner on the end of this cotton bud and we'll just uh, clean as much as we can off and then once it's running I normally put it on the rolling road. This is the DCC Concepts rolling road. Um, problem with the terrier is that you can't. There's no access to the wheels because of all the um, the running gear and the the boards that are in the way. So luckily, we can just suspend it on the two. And as it's running, uh, just a damp cotton bud underneath there. You need to clean the uh, the rims and the backs as well, where the uh, the contacts and the pickups would work. And we'll let it run for a little while, and that's it, pretty much done for now. So, a big thank you to everybody for joining us today. If you've not already subscribed, just hit the subscribe button, and uh, you can join us next time at Bunter's Yard. And we'll see you very soon.